Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating a featured image slider using ASP.NET Core and Angular 8. In the last video tutorial of the series, we finished coding the functionality to update and delete the gallery as well as to add a new gallery. In this video tutorial, we will learn how we can make these galleries that we create featured and active so that they can appear on the home page of our application if we go back if we go back to the admin panel and we check the featured image slider creator or the featured image slider view this is the finished uh, project and if you look at the preview tab you will have options to select and edit galleries and in the action tab which we will be working and implementing uh, this table which will be generated using a javascript library called as tabulator js so for those who are not familiar with tabulator tabulator is similar to data tables but I find it much much improved and uh, we can use it in our angular project without having much problems of integrating it as uh, I have created uh, projects where I used data tables and there I have found issues of the data being rendering in angular sometimes it doesn't render so if we if you prefer data tables you can use data tables but in this project we will be using tabulator it's open source and the source code is available on github we will download uh, the required files since we cannot use uh, libman to install the library in our project we are using libman as our a package manager for our asp.net core app and we have installed various packages like bootstrap jquery popper js but we cannot install tabulator as of yet using libman so we will directly download the javascript files and we will place them in our root folder and we will reference them when we build or integrate this tabulator feature so let's look at the feature so what this tabulator js brings to our application is the ability to sort our results using the different values that we set for example i have set different uh, selection criteria over here where i can filter my results based on id title uh, these are nothing but the name of the columns where the data is stored so based on the column name i can sort the results so if i want to search a particular gallery i can go to the id or and i can basically create a query like i can just if the id is equal to 13 then it will find me a gallery whose id is equal to 13 and display it in the tabulator table similarly if i want to use uh, some if i want to find a gallery by a title so i can change this to like and i can just say animal and you will see it will load the animal gallery if i put fishes over here it loads the fishes gallery and that's what makes tabulator one of the most popular library libraries when in terms of managing your data from database so i recommend you that you learn this particular library and integrate it in your projects and uh, help the developer to promote this particular library uh, so now we have we will go to our front end of this finished project and here you see that currently i have a the default uh, featured slider and if you go to the animal gallery you will see it's active and it's featured you'll see a check mark over here which is green that's because i have set it to active if i had to change it to not active and not featured and save this and go back to my home page and refresh this 
then there is no gallery here that appears. So we will integrate this feature as well. And you also notice that the check mark is changed into a cross. Now, if I want to make the fishies gallery featured, so I can make it featured and I can save this. But when I go to the front end and I refresh, I will not see the gallery unless I make it active. So I can save this. Now I go refresh this and now I can see the dolphin image which is basically part of the fishes image gallery. So let's go and integrate this tabulator library so we can start coding this particular feature and integrate it in this project. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and start adding the required files. The first thing is go to tabulator.info and download the zip file that contains all the required files and folders. So click on the download button and you can then extract the zip file. So I've already downloaded the zip file and extracted it. So we'll have a folder called as tabulator-master. We will have files inside the folder. You need to go to the dist folder, then to the JS folder. And here, what we need to do, we're going to use the minified version of the library. So first thing that we want to do is go to our application go to the root folder and then inside the root folder we have the lib folder which contains all the libraries now inside the lib folder we will add another folder and we will call this as tabulator and inside tabulator we will create two folders one will be called css and then we will add another folder inside tabulator we will call this as js so we have these two folders let's go and reveal them in finder and then what we want to do is inside the css file we can go to the file that we have inside tabulator so we would go to the CSS folder of our library and then we will download two files or we will copy and paste two files. One is the tabulator.min.css and since we are using a bootstrap we will need to also use tabulator underscore bootstrap for. So first let's copy this. then go to bootstrap folder and then copy tab tabulator underscore bootstrap 4.min.css so we'll use the minified version now go to the js folder and copy the minified version of the javascript file for the library and we can close this folder now we should have all the required files that we need in order to work with tabulator.js and to integrate it. We'll go back to our gallery.js file and here we will start adding some code. So if we go to the index.cshtml, inside the tabs where we are going to add this tabulator, I have some comments placed here saying start tabs. So this is where the tab code starts. So where we are going to add this is under the action tab. So search for actions tab. And here you will see that we have some comments saying actions tab start here. So here we would need to add some code in order for us to create a table. So first let's add that code. So here I've added a row 
and inside the row we have a column and inside the column we have a responsive table with some options that you will see once I save this and then you have a div with an ID of load gallery table so now I'm going to save this and I'm going to run our application to see what is happening in the front end so the application is loaded let's go to the admin panel go to our actions tab and now you can see that we have some options we have two drop downs over here one for the values that we will use to compare and to filter so these are three buttons that I have created one is to clear this filter that we type here then we can reload the galleries once we have added new galleries so we will get a new list and then we can save the changes when we make any edit going back to the code so here once again we have just added the drop downs with the respective values that we are going to use and then we have added a div that is basically an empty div with an id of load gallery table and we are going to dynamically generate the table inside this div using tabulator.js so now let's go to gallery.js and start creating a dynamic table with tabulator so just uh, below our document.ready function here we will add the tabulator code so first thing that we would need to do is create a variable call it table and is equal to a new tabulator table so it's tabulator and then what we want to do is we want to start coding the values inside this tabulator class so first thing inside the tabulator class we need to specify the id of the table or the div where we want to create this table so we want to create this table inside this div called as load gallery table so we go and we target the div next thing that we do we open the curly braces and we will inside this curly braces set all the required properties and options for our table so starting with the height so the height would be 800 pixel and this is uh, a json array format so do make sure you don't use equal to you have to use the colon symbol over here next we will add the layout and the pagination size so i have left the layout to fit the column so whatever the data inside the column the column size would be adjusted automatically the pagination size is how many uh, rows i want uh, inside the table on each page and the placeholder is set to no data set so now what we want to do is we need to set the options for columns so inside the columns so the first column will be our ID column which will hold the IDs of all the gallery so the first thing that we want to give a column is a title a header uh, so we will use the title key and then we will provide the title as ID next thing we need to access the data or manipulate the data inside this column so this column needs to have an accessor id to access it so we will use the field key and then specify the value so we will call this as gallery 
ID. Now we need to also provide the data type of the data that's stored inside the column. And for that, we will use the sorter keyword and we will specify the data type as number because ID is an integer. And then since ID column is not going to be wide enough so it's like just two to three digits and at the most if you have thousands of data uh, rows or records you would not want these columns with to be uh, to fit the data so what we are going to do is we can specify custom width as well so using the width uh, key and you can provide the width uh, as whatever you want so i'm going to leave it as 10 percent of the total width now the next column is the title column so let's add that so here we have added the title column and the accessor is called title make sure you don't use any space or dash uh, within the field names uh, you can use dash but you cannot use space so it has to be one word so here i will leave it as title and then the data type the sort row would be string so and the title since i don't know what is the exact size so i will leave it to fit the column in the layout i'm not specifying any width uh, next uh, two columns would be the featured and is active column which will hold the check mark if the gallery is featured or no so so if you just see the demo on tabulator you will see that I'm talking about this check mark here. So to add this row, these the value or the data type is going to be boolean, which is going to be true or false. So let's add them. So here are the two uh, columns. One is active, the other is featured, and the accessor is active, and the accessor for featured is is featured. I've aligned the content in center using the align keyword that's because if you don't do that then the data will move towards the side and it doesn't look good so that's why i put it in the center using the align keyword and then the formatter uh, you can choose different uh, types of formatter i have used the tick cross formatter which is a check mark or a cross and you can get more information about different types of formatters you can use on the official website of tabulator and you can research about that on your free time so the sort of once again data type is boolean so i left it as boolean so now the next column that we are going to add is the uh, created column so let's add that so for the created column if you look at the finished project you will notice that the created column contains the date for the gallery when the gallery was created so date in order to display date we need to get the date the current date and time when the gallery was created so first thing we add the title second the accessor which is the field the sorter which is the data type for this would be date we will align the content in center and now if you want to add specific uh, date time format like utc gt uh, gmt so you would have to use the formatter a uh, keyword and then for a formatter you need to specify a function that returns a the data that needs to be displayed so this function cannot be void it needs to return some data so let's create a function and assign it to this formatter so function and function so inside this function the logic to return the date time we will code it inside here so first thing that we want to pass as a parameter would be the cell where you need to update the data so cell 
so it's this cell where the data is going to be updated so we pass the cell to the function and then so you you cannot use uh, anything else here so you have to use cell so that's how it works so use cell the cell where you want to display the data and then we create a variable that is basically going to hold the convert uh, converted time so i'll call it convert time and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the date class from javascript a new date and first thing i will do is using this cell object that was passed in the function the cell dot uh, tabulator has an inbuilt method called as get value and what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the value dot to utc string so the date that i'm going to set inside this cell is going to be the utc string format there are different uh, date formats that are available you can use so I'm going to use the UTC string format. So now this convert time variable holds the date value. So I'm just going to return this uh, variable. So once this variable is returned, whatever value is returned will be set inside the uh, cell for this created field. Similarly, we want to get the updated time. So we are going to follow the same principle here and create another column for the updated time updated time when the gallery is first created the created time and the updated time will be same but when the gallery is updated the created time does not change but the updated time will change so let's add the updated time column so here i have added the updated time column it will be the column header is updated the field accessor is last updated. The once again the data type, which is the sorter, is date. Align the contents in center. Used the formatter property here, which is going to return my own custom value using this function. So all I'm doing is returning the UTC string of the date time to this cell. The cell will get the value from here. Next thing that we want to do is we want to add the username column so the user who created this particular gallery we need to show their name or username in this column so let's create the username column so i am going to add the username and the type column and both are same so gallery type is the type whether it's a featured home gallery whether it's a home featured product gallery and so on so you can see here that we have different types so whatever type the galleries you can see it over here now the next thing that we would want to add is the action buttons the action button columns which will contain the preview functionality when the button is click the edit functionality to edit the gallery to make it featured or active and then the delete button to delete the gallery so going back here next thing that we will add would be the actions column so let's add that so we have added the actions column with the title of actions the column whether it's sortable i have set it to false this is a another new keyword that i'm using which is property that i'm using which is sort sortable which means that you cannot sort these columns we can sort the id but we cannot sort the button columns so it's not going to move up and down when you try to sort it so you can set this value of this property to false to prevent the column from being sorted then the column once again the data inside the columns i've set, aligned it in center and the formatter function will contain the code that will create these buttons 
and display them. So first thing that we want to do before we create the buttons, we need to make sure we get the values of the row data. So if I go to my pre, uh, finished project, when I click on the preview button, I get the data of this particular uh, gallery. So if I click on big fishes, I get the big fishes images. So the data related to big fishes gallery. When I click on the animal gallery, I get the data related to animal gallery, the images associated with that gallery. When I click on the edit button, I get the gallery title, the gallery type, the date created, updated, and the username. Basically, I'm getting the data of this row when I click on the edit button. So when I click on the edit button, I need to make sure I store these values inside some variables so that I can display them inside this model. So to get the values from the cells and store them inside a variable, we will follow the procedure, which is we will create variables for each data value that we need to store. So for gallery ID, for gallery title, for the active feature tab, for the created and last updated time, for the username and for the gallery type. If you have any other columns that you have added, make sure you add them inside the columns array. Also, you create these variables to store the data of those column cells. Now, the next thing that we want to do after we have stored all the data from those cells of that particular row inside these variables. So next thing that we want to do is create the row. So let's go ahead, create the action button div. So we need to create a div which will hold all these three buttons. So let's go ahead and create that. So for tabulator, you cannot directly add HTML code and create buttons. Whenever we need to add any data as explained before when we created this column here, for we when we use the function that the formatter always expects the uh, value to be returned. So every time the, you use the formatter, uh, property you have to use a function that is returning some value that can be displayed inside the cell so we if we try to add some html code we are not returning anything back to this function so we are going to get an error or our table is not going to be loaded because of this error so first thing that we want to do is we will create a variable called as new edit row and I'm going to add uh, some HTML content here. And then I'm going to return this new edit row. So when the content is returned, which is HTML, it will display it. So let's add some HTML content. We will concatenate each string of our HTML tags. So let's remove this string and add our own string so you can use another uh, open a new page on this editor and uh, open a new file and you can code your html content and then concatenate each line so that your code looks something like this or you can copy paste this entire code which i'll be providing so all i'm doing is I'm, i have first created a div opened a div tag and closed the div tag inside the div tag i have a button but the button tags for uh, to add to preview to edit and to delete inside each button tag before the button closes i am adding inside the opening button tab i'm adding some data attributes so in order to get the data from this variable and to display it uh, using the data label attribute we have to make sure we use single quotes and then double quotes and concatenate the value here. So the way we will access it is through data labels. So as you see, I have used data attributes ev everywhere inside the button and then I have put a dash and then added the uh, name 
a unique identifier for each of these data uh, attributes. So every time, and there is one thing that I noticed when I worked with tabulator, when I'm uh, creating these identifiers for each data attribute, if I try to do it something like this, data.editid, I have some camel casing here, which I have one of the alphabets, alphabets in uppercase. It's, it doesn't work. It needs to be all lowercase. So, uh, so I had this mistake, uh, I made this mistake. So I hope you don't make the same mistake. You used all lowercase when you, when you use the identifiers for each data attribute. So now we can save this. Now each button, if you notice, each button has a on-click event attached to it. So the on-click event for the preview button is loading a model as expected when the preview button is clicked. The preview model loads when the edit button clicks, the edit model loads. So we have to now make sure that we add these models. So when the button is clicked, these model loads. So now let's go ahead and uh, first thing that we want to do is create the model, but we would go and we would first add the model. We don't have a model. So when the button is clicked, we need to have a model created. So we have a model for all other uh, functionality that we have that is edit and delete the gallery, but we don't have a model for our actions tab. So let's add the model to preview the slider. So here I am setting up a model which is called as preview model by its ID. So whenever a gallery is uh, clicked, uh, the ID of that gallery will be passed to this model and then we can preview that gallery. So now what we want to do is now we have the model code added. Next thing that we want to do is go to gallery.js and then create this load model slider so when the button is click we can see the model being loaded so let's add this see here we will add the function that is required to load this model slider so first thing we will pass inside this method would be the id of the gallery that we need so we are going to pass the entire object inside when uh, inside this method when the button is clicked and from that object we will get the value of the data attribute which has the name edit id so we will have access to the id of the gallery that needs to be loaded and then we will call the preview gallery model body which we have created over here and then inside the preview model body first we will clear if in case there is another model inside loaded another uh, another gallery detail loaded first we need to first clear that and then we will load our model and then once the model is loaded we have created a counter object over here set the value to zero and then we are calling the ajax method as we need to call the api and get the gallery get the image gallery by its id we will call the api endpoint get the image gallery by its id and we'll specify the id in the url route and then when we receive the data we are going to create the carousel so first thing that we want to do is since we have the carousel uh, indicators and the controls that we when the button is click when the we then generate this carousel we have this indicator and we we have this control these indicators and these controls these indicators and these controls we so these controls, they, they don't have to be co coded 10 times because they are just two, two indicators here. So what we want to do is inside of a code, first, whatever objects that we are going to load only once, we have first creating them using jQuery. We are appending them to the HTML body of our model. And then finally, the, the content that needs to be added dynamically which are the images the 
alt tag and the title tags we are going to use a dollar each which is a for each loop jquery for each loop on the data that we receive and then for each data object that we received for each image and its attributes we are going to loop and create the gallery so i'm not going to go into detail explaining this jquery code it is pretty much obvious i'm using the append method to append the uh, list tags and then i'm appending the carousel inner so what i have done is i have created the bootstrap carousel i have just created it using jquery instead of html and finally after e each image is loaded i increase the counter so the second time when the second image is load i get the second image and just to make the first image active i have used uh, uh, this counter here to make sure if the image is uh, if the if it's the first image when the counter is at zero i set the class to active because if i set all the images give them a class of active in bootstrap carousel so the image won't rotate or it might not load so only the first image needs to be active okay so first image so every time the slider moves the index also changes so i'm also logging the value of what i receive so i can see that in my console you don't need to do that but if you want to you can add this so that should be it for this video tutorial in the next video tutorial we will continue coding our tabulator uh, continue integrating the tabulator uh, js library and we have to work on the edit gallery model and the delete gallery model as well so we will do that in the next video tutorial please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy you will find all this code in the day of repo and the link for that will be provided in the video description thank you